Hey, what's up? My name is Clantis and welcome to Clantis Tumagute Podcast. Well, guys, the reason why I was absent last week is because I had an appointment. If you didn't know or you did not notice, if you go to my other videos, you may have noticed that I have skin tags. What I did not realize, though, is that I also had skin tags on my face, particularly here on my cheekbone as well somewhere above my eyebrows and below my eyes on even on top of my eyelids i knew that i had some bumps but i didn't understand what those bumps were about so when the skin doctor is it a skin doctor but is it an aesthetic clinic of some sort so they discovered that i also had skin tags on my uh, face but the most skin tags that i had were situated here probably you can still see the scarring they are all healing uh even this side i had a lot of skin tags just here they were like thick and black and some of them were even kind of like hanging and uh so they removed them as you can see i am healing so the reason why i was not um on youtube last week is because i did it did not look good it did not look good at all and on top of that i couldn't necessarily where things that were touching the wounds so now that the melanin is starting to cover the scarring even on my faces i don't know if you can still see the the melanin is starting to cover the uh the scarring including just below my eyes if you see here i still have some pinkish going on even here apparently this was also a skin tag that was up here that made my this part of my eye look thick which i didn't understand why suddenly i had that as well they removed all those things so i've been recovering now i feel i am not 100 percent. i would say i'm 95 percent recovered by next week i think i'll be probably all uh all good however though as i was busy uh <laughs> scrolling down my video uh, my videos I came across the video you guys are going to watch. It's me and Stace at his house just having a drunken conversation. I don't drink alcohol, you guys. I'm not a person that drinks alcohol. If I do drink, probably to be once in a blue moon. And when I say once in a blue moon, I'm talking years. At this point, when I was having this drink with uh, Stace, I have not had a drink like that over 10 years. So my head is pretty light when it comes to alcohol. And so the conversation we're having uh, is just, just call it a drunken conversation. But you know drunken conversations, there's always truth that is also told in them. And uh, there are some other things as well that you'd be like, that was unnecessary. But anyways, this is what we do. Even whether we are sober or we're drunk, this is the relationship that Stace and I have. It's a very tight friendship that we have and the same uh, friendship i'm developing with other african americans that are here like Smu, who's now a celebrity here in south africa <laughs> and he has no time to hang out with me no more Smu. and um what else so yeah this is just us having a conversation experience that uh, uh stace and i had in this is called jabu here in south africa that's his south african name we were coming from soweto um we had uh, there's a there's a place called onions that's most place this is the place where we take most african americans when they come here to hang out so we're returning from soweto around 1 30 in the morning and so in four ways i don't know what that freeway called i don't know what that freeway called the one that from soweto and you on ramp into four ways so when you turn on your left there were traffic cops there and they profiled his uh, vehicle because he was driving a Range Rover. And clearly, Range Rover, pe people that drive Range Rovers are deemed to be rich. Anyways, four ways is for the wealthy people or it's wealthy people live there. So obviously, if you're driving a Range Rover, you are deemed rich. That means you have money and it's lying around, you know, like, uh, I don't know what. And so he was profiled because of his the type of vehicle he was driving. And so he was pulled aside and then they gave us this, it gave him this breathalyzer. This is after they noticed that 
he has a, an American driver's license, is not a South African driver's license, and also he obviously has an American accent. So this guy thought, hmm, let's see how much I can get out of this guy. And then uh, he takes out the breathalyzer and then he makes him blow into the breathalyzer. Stace knows very well that he's sober because the last time he had a drink was 1 p.m. And I was with him at 1 p.m. when he was having two savannas. And then we were going to Soweto at 9 p.m. And we went to Soweto at 9 p.m. You can't tell me that from 1 a.m. to 9 p.m. I mean, 9 p.m. What am I saying? From 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. on the same day, the alcohol has not worn off his system. Let alone 14 and a half hours later when the police pull us over, uh, he still had alcohol. And he was not drinking in Soweto at all, despite... Many people offering uh, him drinks. He still said, no, I'm driving. And states when he drives, he doesn't drink. He, that's, uh, that's his rule. When I'm driving, I'm not going to drink. If I'm taking an Uber, yeah, that's when I can drink to my heart's desire. I mean, uh, whatever, uh, contentment. Is it contentment? <laughs> heart's content. <laughs> oh, you, I'm not drunk. Trust me, I'm not drinking. Uh, to his heart's content, right? But uh, they pulled him over. They gave him this. Thing, and then he blew into it and it says alcohol detected and I thought breathalyzers will tell you the reading of the level of alcohol in your system but it just says alcohol detected now I don't know anything about alcohol and traffic what all that stuff I don't know anything about that and then he says okay now I'm gonna have to impound your car take you to this clinic where they are going to read, where you're going to get the reading of the level of alcohol. Obviously, that clinic and these police officers, they work together. Whatever he's going to get out of the driver, he shares it with the nurse or the doctor or whoever is in that. That's the kind of corruption that we were talking about in the video. So I felt like, you know what? It's his anniversary. I was like, ask him how much he wants. And then he says 2,500 rand. I was like, I got the 2,500 rand because I knew states did not have it on him and i said listen i can go get this money uh and if you can just park it and let me know where can i go so the, the there were two petrol station which is garage stations that were opposite of each other but they were about plus or minus uh 500 meters from the where they stopped us in that off-ramp corner and then this police officer has the audacity to say to me I'm arresting him, but you can take the vehicle. I said, I'm not, I don't have my driver's license with me. And that particular night, I was not in the mood of driving any vehicle, let alone somebody else's car illegally. And he says, no, it's okay. You can drive it. The garage is there. There's an ATM. And in my head, I'm like, you just stopped him for breaking the law. And you're asking me to break the law to go and get this money for you. It just did not make sense at all. That is why I feel that the, the traffic officers that uh, get vehicles on that corner at four ways, they need to be foiled. They need to be arrested, those guys. They are criminals. Those are not uh, traffic cops. Those are criminals in government uniform. And this needs to stop because the law is clear. They need to have the uh, blue lights on. They must be visible at 100 meters b for any traffic. But no, they hide right there in the corner when you uh, on-ramp, you on-ramp right onto them because there's a, a blind spot that you literally turn. When you turn, here they are. They're already flashing their lights for you to uh, to stop. So that is the conversation he and I are having. And as an African-American or African diaspora that comes to South Africa, there's a high chance you are going to meet corrupt traffic officers like those ones very high possibility so it's either you give them that cold drink so that you don't get into trouble and have yourself a criminal record and the next thing you can't enter the republic of south africa or you just give them that 20 rand or something but with us we departed with 2500 rand that morning which is unacceptable <coughs> Which is unacceptable, of course. Uh, yes, States did uh, repay me the money uh, the following day, but it's unacceptable. It's something that does 
gets me very, very, very angry. And of course, you're going to also get those South Africans who has unreasonable, um, I don't know what you can call it. There are very few. There's not all of us. They are driven by stupidity and ignorance. Uh, they, they will say negative things about anybody that is not a South African citizen. So uh, African-Americans to them, they are fair game. So we had one that made a comment in a video of another African-American. That African-American brother told states that, hey, this guy is saying this. And so that's the guy we are also discussing and pretty much I am fired up with uh, anger towards that individual because I still don't believe that that's a real man. Even if it was a woman, I'll still say that's not a real woman. I don't know what it is. Uh, don't, there's nobody that gossip about another person to another person. Confront the person if uh, you're having issues. If you misunderstood, say I misunderstood. What did you mean here? But he jumped the gun. So those are the conversations that we are having in this video and also laughing along. This is just part one. This part two where uh, Stace is busy uh, making chicken wings and more conversation is, um, is had there. Once again, it is a drunken conversation, unfortunately. <laughs> Pretty much drunken conversations. So yourself, when you come through, these are the sort of conversations we are going to have, sober or drunk. I mean, I enjoy having uh, deep conversations and getting closer uh, to each other as friends and brothers, sisters, you name it, and all of that. So I don't want to make this intro way too long, longer than it already has. So please do enjoy the video. It's, um, yeah, it, that's just how things are. But thank you guys. Uh, I highly appreciate you always. Thank you for watching the ads. The ads are important to watch. I appreciate you guys that are watching it. And those of you that have subscribed, welcome to the family. And uh, there's more that is coming, more African-Americans that I am meeting currently. I'm even invited to a conference that is hosted by African-Americans. And uh, it's currently happening right now, but I'll be going there on Wednesday and uh just have a great time learn what needs to be learned and network and build more relationships so with my brothers and sisters from the u.s and other african diaspora thank you guys so much uh for always supporting this channel i appreciate you more to come like i said no we can continue on this one because my problem is you are a police officer traffic officer and in South Africa, it's clear what the traffic, um, what is it called, traffic act, no? Metro police, whatever it's called. Number one, this guy is supposed to be a hundred meters visible when you are coming. They in four ways, they are not even 50 meters. The moment you turn, I don't know what that, um, well, I don't know, I don't know the meters. That freeway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. moment you turn from the they're then, right there. They're yeah, right you there. you on ramp, and there they are. Wait, I'm, I'm, but the law says that they need to be hundred meters and visible, so, and they must have their lights on. So how you not they, how you know they're not hundred meters though? They're not hundred meters. You when, when you turn, there they are. But how you know it's hundred meters? That's not hundred meters. Number one, the hundred meters means that they need to be visible. You they're, need all, to they're always visible. No, 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 no. When you're coming from that freeway and then you off you on ramp. You on ramp onto them. Oh, in four ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I know. You're yeah, you you onto them. Where did you see them? Where did you get an opportunity? You see them as soon as you see them. Exactly, exactly. right there. Exactly, and on top of that, they will make up stories. They'll give you a breathalyzer that doesn't tell you how much percent of alcohol is in your system. Instead, they say alcohol detected. That's, that's what how, they said, and that's how they got me. Yeah, and they said and you alcohol was there, you detected. Was there, and you was there with me. I was, yeah, I was definitely with you. Now the question, well, okay, man, I'm not a person that drinks and all that stuff, so I don't know these things. I know that you breathe into a while you're you here and you enjoy your drink. Well, this is <laughs> <laughs> while you're here and enjoy your drink. It's you're not, not a person it's that not drinks. alcohol. While you're here and enjoy your drink. <laughs> you're not a person that drinks. Me. <laughs> <It's exposed laughs> me. <laughs> He's like, why is he going to enjoy it? Exposed me! <laughs> <laughs> I 
But the thing is, you had a Savannah at 1 p.m. And we get stopped at 2 a.m. a.m. You telling me one or two? I might have had two savannas. I think yeah, I remember we had actually two. I, I had two. You telling me two savannas are still alive in your system after twelve hours? After twelve hours, no, that, that, that that's mm-hmm. shit. That's shit. That's shit. That I'm really telling is. you. Really so then they come and say, no, we detect the breathalyzer detects alcohol, and you're like, okay, but what's the percentage? Because we know it needs you know, to be. We, did, we didn't say that though. Because we, we no, just, no, no, it didn't. We just no, no. I'm saying yeah. We didn't ask what the percentage because we just heard two point five, and oh yeah, or no, no. you're going to jail. No, no, no. We, what, I, I, I think I, what scared us was that we could take you now to the police. No, not to the police station. To the clinic, which is just behind whatever he said, and they will tell you the percentage. But we will book you in. Well, what, what's honestly what scared me was, I'm not even sure if you know this or not, but we're gonna find out right now. That was my anniversary weekend. Right. Oh yeah. You know. Yes. yes and then yes. The, the very next day was my anniversary right. day. Right. So, in fact, that day was your anniversary day. Yeah, right. It was, it was, it was already after twelve. 20. Right. Yeah. So it's like I would have been locked up. That set. That that was it. A Saturday or Sunday? It was a Sunday. So I would have been locked up that Sunday. Right. On my anniversary, yeah, and would have got out on a Monday. On that Monday, Mm-mm. you were not getting out on Monday. You were how going to go see the magistrate on Monday. So, so how does it work? What happens? So you got arrested, but being arrested, and then they take a, take you to that so called clinic, which I don't think it even exists. And then because because you were not willing to pay, now you have a criminal. A charge that he would have um, bestowed on you because he did not pay him the 2.5 and the only way for you to get out is to challenge this by going to court but therefore you have to go to court so that the magistrate sees you and then your name can be legally uh, released and then from there you have to get yourself a lawyer who's going to defend your good name were you drunk on that particular day? When did you drink on that particular day? At 2.30, after 12 hours of drinking two savannas, were you drunk by 2.30 a.m.? That is almost 14 hours and 30 minutes later. And then the magistrate would have to make a decision whether that is uh, deemed drunk at that point or not drunk. And on top of that, we need to challenge the breathalyzer. Why the breathalyzer says detects alcohol rather than show you how much of the alcohol that was not allowed in your system? I think in South Africa it's 0.2 or something like that. That's it, not even a bear. It, I don't know what that is, honestly speaking. So I think it's either between 0.2 or 0.4 alcohol level that is within the legal limit. So now, how did we know at that point when you got stopped by the police officers? That your blood, your the alcohol limit in your blood was beyond, was beyond. 0. 0.2 or 0. 0.4. Yeah, we didn't know that. We didn't know this. Didn't all tell all us that. it said was we detect alcohol. That's what he says. That's all it yeah. said. He because, says that, because he assumed, yeah, and he assumed the right that we didn't know the law. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So we got screwed because we didn't know the law. We didn't know anything about the breathalyzer, how the breathalyzer works. Supposedly works. Yeah, exactly. Now, only now that we know that, no, the breathalyzer should read you and it should show you that it says 0.5 or 0.6. Point, point whatever. Oh, yeah, that is beyond the legal limits. And therefore, we have to take you in. The fact that he knew that you broke the law, why then did he let you go? And why then did he ask for 2.5? You know, and the thing is this. And then, you know, before you go on, the interesting thing, he wanted to, I didn't have a license. He said, I'm going to drive mm-hmm. your car to go and withdraw. And I'm saying, I don't have a license. No, no, no. You can. I'm like, matter. you are the police officer that just got this guy for so-called drunken driving. And you're asking me to drive a car it's illegally. To get some money. To go get some money. That for me, it way I was like, ah, this is, this is a crime that has been committed. And I think the, the traffic officers that stop cars in that corner 
of four ways, they need to be fined and arrested, prosecuted and thrown in jail. Because what they're doing there is a crime. That this is my take. No, 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 no. I, I agree with you 100%. Because what they're doing is they, 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 they bring in people that come off of that rank. Mm. Whether and when you turn, there they are. They're right, right there. there. Whether yeah. they've been drinking yeah. or yeah. coming from Bible study, whatever they've been doing, they're coming off. And then they and then they targeting a high end vehicle. That's it. You're driving you know a Range Rover. I'm driving a Range Rover, right. and they see that Range Rover. They're like, "Oh, money! They, it, it, you have been written money all over you." Mm -hmm. And the fact that when you open your mouth, ah, so I had two strikes against me. You saying right. I'm driving a Range Rover and an American. American? Yeah. So I got two strikes. Exactly, because he asked for your driver's license, your driver's license, and he American. saw Texas, and he saw Texas, he saw Texas, and then ka ching ka ching ka ching ka ching in his head. And then he says, I'm going to need you to breathe into this thing. And he detected alcohol. And he and he banked on that I didn't know the law. Yes. He banked on it. Which is true. Both and, of us, we didn't. And that's understandable. Yeah, both of us, we didn't. It won't ever happen again. Yeah. But I'm just saying, though, you know, yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, now we know better. We know better now. Yeah. If we, if we are stopped and they say breathe, we want to see the reading of the breathalyzer. Did the driver surpass the uh, legal limit or under the legal limit, limit or within the legal limit? And you know what? They probably don't even have that machine because remember now, it's an illegal stop. So yeah. they probably don't have that machine that even says the percentage of being right. over or under. Yeah. That's why they have the machine that says been drinking. Right. Be you know what I'm saying? Because it's illegal. Yeah. And besides Makes that, you know what I'm saying? yeah, yeah. The interesting part about this is that when we went to Onions on that uh, Saturday into Sunday, you did say that I cannot drink because I'm driving. You were offered drinks at Onions Oops. by many people, and you kept saying I cannot because I am driving. If I was using an Uber, definitely I would drink. Only all of that to go to waste. I would have rather you have eat, drink, drank all that alcohol <laughs> and then when that brother as I say is, yeah, there is alcohol detected and both of us were like, yeah, he, he did drink. He, he did drink. I'm guilty as charged. He's guilty as charged. But right? I wasn't. But you were not. But I wasn't. That last time. And you know, there was people that was happy that, I, that, that when they told, when, when it was said that I, I might have to get locked up, it was people that was happy. So, some people. Now, I don't know they were, if they were South Africans, no, or Zambians, or Mozambicans, or Zimbabweans. That doesn't matter. The point is this: people was happy yeah. that I was going to get locked up for something that I did not do, and I don't understand that. Like, yo, what did I do mm. to people to, that that would want me to get locked up? I've never done anything. Yeah, I welcome everybody to hang out. And have a good time. I mean, I did see the the, the the comments. My my issue with that comment is it's a man gossiping about another man to another man in the channel, saying that oh, uh, not all African Americans that are coming to South Africa are good um, African Americans. Like that guy who calls himself Jabu. He broke the law and bribed the police. He did not listen to the story. He did not listen to He's a gossiper. Hmm. And what is interesting is that because he was gossiping about you to, uh, to Ricky, Ricky came back to you and said, listen, this is what, what's happening. So, because why? Ricky is an honest human being. They are toxic. That's toxicity. A well, man that gossip about another man to another man in their channel. Why don't they approach you and say, bro, what you did was wrong? And then you are able to say, no, you misunderstood me. My last Savannah was at one in the afternoon. And my friends and I, we went to Onions in Soweto. And I was driving. And I knew that I was not going to drink. And people offered me drinks at Onions. And I still said no because I'm driving. That's what happened. So now the gossiper goes to another channel and speaks about you. That's what he is. He's a gossiper. 
Well, what I want to say is this. Ricky called me. Mm. Well, I'm lying. Ricky messaged me and said, mm. bro, so-and-so said this. I'm ready to delete uh, the, what comment. Was, what the, the comment. Yeah. I said, no, nah, don't delete it, bro. Because I, I know what I've done. Yeah. And I know what I didn't do. Right. You know, I clearly said in the video that I drank a Savannah or two, one o'clock, two o'clock, whatever it was. Yeah. And then I got stopped 12 hours later. later. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So my brother Ricky, I salute him for uh, for, uh, for, being, to, for yeah. being honest right. and trying to protect his brother. Right. You know what I'm saying? But the, the truth of the matter is I didn't do anything wrong. It was 12 hours before. There's no way in the world that was still in my system. Right. Absolutely. 12 hours. There's no way. All the food I ate. Scientifically and biologically <laughs> speaking, there is no way that our, that two savannas were still alive in your system. No. 12 and a half hours. In fact, it was 14 and a half hours later. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we were stopped at half past two. I can, read, I can read Ricky. That's my brother. Yeah. You know. So now the gossiper doesn't know that after Ricky read that, he was going to come back to you because there's no way that he's going to listen to a gossiper of a man and then just looks at you with judgment, probably. Why is the animosity towards us like that? We're not taking no jobs. Mm. We're trying to offer job, jobs. We're not trying to hurt nobody. Right. We're just trying to live our best life. Right. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we've, been, we've been stolen from this country. Our ancestors, our, I'm not sorry, our family's been stolen from this country years and years and years ago, and now we're coming back. Right. Why mm. us coming back hurts anybody? Because we're not trying to, we're not trying to hurt anybody. Bro, Why? the answer is simple, stupidity. Ignorance and stupidity, and the fact that you go onto a global platform like YouTube and expose stupidity, that is some some other level of stupidity to me. I'm telling you, that is some other level of dumbness. That you would go to another man's channel and leave a comment like that. Why don't you approach Stace and say, I don't feel comfortable that you will come to my country and you do so that he he, he gives you the opportunity to set the record straight. He made a very Huge brand. I don't call that guy a man if he's a man. That's not a man. And definitely not a South African man for that matter. Definitely not. If he is South African, well, he was badly raised. <laughs> Whoever the man figures in his life, probably they, were, they used to be gossipers. And this is the only way he knows that if he's going to deal with a situation that he's uncomfortable about, he's going to go to another man and gossip about that man of the things that he assumed that were wrong and he feels uncomfortable about. He's a gossiper. That's not a man. He has no balls. That's just my take on so that. So you say he sniffed? Bro, whether if he has it hanging, it's useless. It's useless. The fact of the matter, the moment he started typing on Ricky's channel, he lost his manhood. That's not a man. That is not a man. A man does not talk like that. I a man that. confronts another man and says, "Listen, I was not comfortable with that." I don't think he can. can I don't think he can confront me though. He's a coward. Of course, he's not a man. Yeah, because I I, I I said what I said, and I was very clear. Yeah. No, I, 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 I was watching the the you live, and I, besides watching the live, I was there. Hey. I witnessed the whole thing in my presence. And what he wrote there, total misinformation. And that is why Ricky was like, I'm not going to be party to this gossip. Let me go and tell my brother Stace that, hey, listen, some gossiper came to my channel and left this gossip. That's what happened. And then I remember you, you told me about this and you wanted to know what do I do about it. I said, it's up to you. Do you want to respond? Because to me, I think that message you started. Oh, I did respond. Yeah, I said, no. I said to listen, you, listen, that's a gossiper. Listen, first of all, is this. I'm a responder. Right. You know, I, I know. I know you. <laughs> I'm, a I'm a responder. Right. My wife tells me to shut up all the time. That, yeah. No, I'm not shutting up. Yeah. Because my thing is this. 
my intentions are good, and then I don't think I did anything wrong. Mm. You know, I don't have a problem try, a person trying to like correct me. Right. I have a problem with that because I have people that do that, and I'm like, you know, and I sit back and I be like, you know what? Yeah, you reflect. Yeah, they right. Yeah, they right. Let me right. let me let me calm down. And besides, you and, you and I have been in that situation where I came to you. I was like, bro, I don't think this was right. Yes, you be defensive now and then, and then after that you came back and said, "Listen, clients, you're right. You were right. You're right. I, I've experienced that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is what you call a man. A man. Yeah, a mature. A mature man. Imagine me now going to gossip about you to Doctor Assad. Oh, this day's guy is even arrogant. I try to show you the right way. And he's uh he's wrong ways, and he's still like a narcissist. Did one, two, three. And I expect Dr. Assad not to come to you and say, hey, Clancy said this about you. Oh, my brother Assad would definitely come to me. Yeah, definitely. I know you. Yes, my, oh, my. Definitely. Same thing with me. If that's somebody, my, I've always brother. done that. Somebody, whether it's a woman or a man, gossiped about another, I always went back to the person. I'm like, listen, so-and-so said one, two, three. And then the person after that, they were confronted. Ah, oh, Clancy, but I was telling you this in confidence. No, with me. You're not going to gossip you with know, me. You know, in the States, we call them chatty patties. <laughs> I think in some in some quarters Chatty, in South Africa they also call them patties. Chatty Patties as well. Chatty Patties. Yeah, I mean that's not a man, bro. That's not a man. You cannot be a man that goes and gossip about another man to another man. And you think that other man is going to be like, yeah, you're right. No, that's why Ricky did not respond to that stupidity. No, yeah, 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 yeah. He just he just messaged me the next morning and said, Big bro. Mm. Uh Big brother, this, this, that, that, what's up? Yeah. And I'm like, bro, don't delete anything. Man. The interesting thing is I'm because I'm a responder. Right, yeah. And and, and I'm with the sh I'm I'm with the sh Yeah. I'm with it. Right. You know, and, and, and he didn't delete it. Yeah. And I handled my business because yeah. then he even said, My big bro handled the business and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say anything else about it. Mm. He said that in the in the chats. Mm. Because like, yo, know, I'm Bro, I'm 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 here. I'm here. everybody that knows me. Mm. I'm here ten toes down. Yeah, South Africa is my home. Yeah, and everybody the, knows me. And the irony of it, you'll find that the very same person pays these police officers that were illegally parked and stopping <laughs> vehicles that they deemed with uh, with driven by rich people. I don't think I'm off. I don't think I'm authorized to even have that conversation. No, but I'm telling you, you this tell me I'm authorized to have that kind of conversation. Yeah, we're going to have that conversation. Right. Right now, I don't think I'm authorized to have. It. Yeah. Well, like, I'm a South African, so I will do it. So, am I authorized to have that conversation? Let's, let's have the conversation. Continue on. Then. Yeah. So, they, those police officers were in the wrong because the law is clear: be a hundred meters visible. South Africa, excuse me, is great in so many ways. Unfortunately, we have. Very corrupt police um, police officers, traffic as well as the South African police services. Flip side, that same coin. Yeah, you can go to Kenya as as South, as, as Americans. Mm. You can go to Ghana. Mm. Uh, all these, all these, you know, whatever, just trying to promote Black Americans to Africa. You can go to all these places. Right. But guess what? We want to be in South Africa, even with the issues, yeah. even with the visa issues, right. even with the cop issues that's targeting us. Tar they're targeting us. That's not that's not that's not sugarcoated. Yeah, that's not sugarcoated. Yeah, they they target us. Yeah, when they see us, their eyebrows raise. And you know, what happened? What happened today when we went to? Um, ah! Just today, I love I'm not going to tell the story. You tell the story. <laughs> so we go and um, oh to God. do some photocopying at uh, the Glen Mall, and we go to Postman. And so, of course, I'm the one who's talking. I'm a South African citizen. So they take my, my uh, driver's license, they make a photocopy, and then it was his uh, turn to hand over his American passport. For photocopying, the guy's eyes and his face beamed with pride and and love and whatever else that he had in his in his eyes. But he doesn't say anything. Towards the end, when it's time to pay, oh he says to us, God. "You don't have to pay. 
is all. I'm thinking to myself, I need to take this American everywhere with me. That's not what happened. <laughs> we can free stuff. <laughs> and right there when we walk out there is uh, the spur. I was like, we need to go to spur. Maybe we are going to walk away with free meal. And he's like, oh, we wouldn't even have that. <laughs> like, what? Yo, American privilege. It's American real. privilege. Yeah. It's real. It's real, bro. It's real. I saw it with my own two eyes today. I was like, we walked away with this thing free of charge? Yeah, okay, maybe. I'll be you were supposed to keep that to yourself. Bro, I'm just trying to show as well. You the were other supposed side. to keep that to yourself. <laughs> That's between me and you. I'm just trying to show the other side of the American privilege that you get people that will scam you for simply hearing your accent. But at the same time, you're going to get people when they hear your accent, they want to give you free stuff. You know, me and Spooder, we was in Soweto last weekend. And this we was just having a good time, smoking cigars, drinking, having a good time. Right. It was like 3 o'clock a.m. So this guy that came in, he uh he sell t shirts. Yeah. And I'm a big guy. Right. So the t shirts had five I, I they in the room. Yeah. It had five XL on it. It was really like a a one XL on. Yeah. It was really, really small too. That, that doesn't matter. But the point is, uh he gave us the shirts for free. Right. And I even I, I said, yo, how much do I owe you? He said, nah, you good, bro, you good, bro. I'm like, bro. How much do I owe you? Yeah. Cause I don't I, I don't I don't want to hand out. Cause I don't want I don't want to owe I don't want anybody to ever think I owe them. Right. You know? So like example, I'm doing music. Mm. I got a bunch of dope artists and stuff like that. So I don't want to like a song to blow up and then this particular person call, yo, I gave him a shirt when he only had uh three views and now he got 9,700,000 views. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I said, yo, bro, how much y'all owe me? Because I want I to I I I pay my way now. Right. So, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. That's, just, that's just how I am. Right. You know, he didn't want no money, but... But you, you're also forgetting something. When we were at Onions in Soweto, there was this guy who was selling uh, sweets, chappies. Um, what, what was this? Um, it must have been like in Jan. Damn, three months ago? Four months ago? Four months ago, yeah. Go ahead. It it didn't come back to me. Go ahead. And so we were just standing there waiting for our Ubers. You were waiting to get home. I was waiting to also take my own Uber. Was who with us? Who was with us? Was we talking to some females? Well, the females, they left. And then this guy came and said, yeah, guys, they know they support 50 seconds. Yes, yes, yes. But then he changed his mind and said, no, you guys can have for free. Simply because he heard you and Smooth's accent. He said, no, 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 you guys can have for free. And I was like... There we go. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, at the end, we did fuck up money and say, no, let's support you and your business. Why do you think they give us, they're willing to give us stuff for free? Why do you think that? It's the love. You know, you and I have had this conversation so many times before about how Africans hate African Americans. And then I've always asked, where is that coming from? And then many South Africans are asking the same question. Where is that coming from? So this is the total uh, opposite of that, that we don't like African Americans. For the longest time, South Africans have always loved African Americans. Some of us even know the history, how African Americans influenced South African political struggle heroes back in the 1950s and 60s, like rise up against this government. And when the white government realized that African Americans are injecting influence onto black South Africans and they are rising, they banned African Americans from coming to South Africa. Some of us know that history. It's a history that was passed down to, down to us, but nevertheless, even those that were not educated about you guys, most of our music influence, R&B, hip hop, even down to your accent. Many South Africans speak in American accent, or supposedly an American accent. They wear baggy clothes, they listen to hip hop, and we also had a hip hop industry in South Africa, all influenced by African American culture. 
So there is no way that at any point in our lives as black South Africans, we ever hated African Americans. African Americans to us have always been our hero. Even our standard of beauty was never Eurocentric. It was always African American based or oriented. That's how it has always been. Always been. So now when somebody says, ah, y'all hate us, and then you hear people say, sometimes some of your friends who shared with me, no, they'll say, they'll say, you in South Africa, those people don't like us. And you're like, the hell? What are you talking about? Yeah, oh, I definitely combat in that. Right, exactly. So that is why you guys get to enjoy what I call American privilege. For example, like today, this was not a black person that gave us these things for free. It was not a black South African. So if it was just you by yourself, it wouldn't happen? That would never happen. I would have paid. You remember the reason why we did not pay is because they were not. They don't take cards uh, below 20, 20, rand. 20 rand. Yeah. So if it was me, they'll say, make a plan, bro. But we need this money. <laughs> but because the moment they saw your passport that you were photocopying, they were like, this is for free, bro. Some other time when you come by, you can pay it if you want to. If you want. I was like, no, I need to take Stacey with me everywhere. <laughs> Maybe if we go to Ferrari, we might walk out of the Ferrari. Ah, let's, let's try tomorrow. Let's try tomorrow. Let's try tomorrow. <laughs> we might get like 20% discount. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never know. Same goes on Tuesday. Like I said, I was having dinner with um, the African American couple, but it's a family that came here. Even the treatment that we're getting at La Parada in uh, Santon, it was so. I don't know what exactly the waiters, because you know you get one waiter. Tell me why we're getting four waiters. Wow, really? I'm telling you. Each waiter had their own responsibility. We had one for water. We had one for other drinks, like uh, cocktails that they were drinking. We had another one for um, for starters, for main course, for dessert. Wow. And, I was, and I'm sitting there like a South African citizen, like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We've never been treated for American privilege. And on top of that, it's not because of an American privilege. It's the love of our brothers and sisters from that America. were stolen, stolen from, from us. America. From America. That were stolen from us. Bro, I understand. Yeah. No, it, 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 it's the beauty of our country, probably the continent as well. But at the same time, then we're going to have traffic cops like the ones that we got that night that goes and mess up everything for us. I don't know how to fix this. The only way you can fix this is when the government puts in place or re increases their salaries, I don't know. Or they put traps and arrest these crooked uh, traffic officers. Why are, you why are you stopping where vehicles turn and they turn right onto you? And then from there you make these demands simply because you're an African American. It's crazy. I agree. It's crazy. But what can we do? We're just ordinary people. We have no power. I don't know. And then we have some gossipers go to other men's channels and say that nonsense that they say. Misinformation. Misinformation. But it is what it is, I guess. We will. The thing is, I always believe that in life, there are people that are sent to be nasty. It's their nature. That's who they are. They can't change it as well. They can't hold themselves. They do it anyways because that's who they are. That's what they were brought to earth for. Like that gossiper. And then you're going to have those that are here to make sure that you have a soft spot to land. Mm. You feel comfortable and welcome. Mm. Even if you come across traffic officers like that, they tell you, listen, all you have to do, bro, is just have 20 rand in your pocket. Just give them a cold drink money and keep it moving. They don't say, they will not label you as a bad African American and bribe our police officers on a story they misunderstood. They misunderstood the story. 
Because if you are an intelligent person, make it make sense that you drink two savannas at 1 p.m. Your last savannah, the second one, is at 1 p.m. Because you knew you were going to Soweto later on. And you knew that you're not supposed to drive drunk when you go to Soweto. And when you get to Soweto and people are offering you alcohol and you still say, guys, tonight I am driving. I cannot have any alcohol. You might as well have taken it because you still parted away with 2.5 that night. It's crazy, it's crazy how some things are done here. But guess what? They will be fixed. They will be fixed. All you have to do, you as an African American in South Africa, just know that you will come across such police officers. Is either you stand your ground and say, no, take me to jail. But if you do challenge them to that, they do have that power. And the next thing you're going to have is a criminal record. You're going to become an undesirable alien when you want to apply for another cycle of a three months visa. Whether I'm, whether I'm wrong or not. You are ruined. Might as well go back to America and get shot by police. <laughs> I'm sorry for having put it in that way. I think this drink is getting to my head. Yes, yes, I don't even like that, Clarence. Clarence said either, either pay the 2.5 or go back to the States and get shot by the police. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh my God. I'm paying 2.5. 2.5, bro. So that you don't get a criminal record. That's it. So, screw them. What's up, bro? Right. I'm going to sleep. Yeah. Nothing. I'm almost drunk. We need to have these. Po- we need to have these podcasts more often to where we're open to where we are. Yeah. Because for some odd reason, this alcohol. That you're not drinking. This juice? I, 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 I'm drinking juice, guys. I don't drink alcohol. This tonight, I just decided, you know what? Let me let my hair loose. <laughs> I don't have. And uh, on a Tuesday night, by the way. On a Tuesday night. I, I don't know what that matters. No, no, no. Um, it, it is what it is. This is our lives. Those that want to join it, let them join. Those that don't want your life. Fuck off. Exactly. <laughs> Are we eating chicken wings tonight? Mm-hmm. I need some chicken wings. I also need some chicken wings. This I'm trying to tell you, if I don't eat something, yeah. I'm going to wake up with a massive headache and dehydrated and wish mm. that I eat something before I went to sleep. I, I, I also need something down my belly and chicken wings will do great. And I know you're a great cook, by the way. Stays the bike down, Benz. Why he doesn't have a restaurant, bro? Why? When I try to get one, the, 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 the guys from Soweto try to screw me. That's why I don't have one. Yeah, I'll be I, keeping I it 100. I'll be keeping it real. No, I know the story. Those guys I, I from Soweto story. try to screw me. I know the story. That's why I don't have one. Mm. There's still time. There's still time. What is coming? Right? Speaking into existence. Exactly. That goes to show you that we, we're not drunk because we can still say words like existence. Because <laughs> when you're drunk, they come <laughs> off as the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, what did I mean to say? What's that word again? Speaking into existence. Speaking into existence. So you can still pronounce the <laughs> still pronounce <the> words. <laughs> but can you walk straight though? I can definitely walk straight. Oh um, yeah, I, I think I can I, as well. I can definitely walk no, because yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's only one drink. So not sit not You wanna reveal the truth? <laughs> no. <laughs> as long as I can cook these chicken wings, right? <laughs> I think that we're not drunk. It's what time now? That is... So what, 2.30? No. Uh, 9.45. As long as we can cook these chicken, chicken wings, yeah. we're not drunk. No. No. <laughs> it's what, like 10, 10 each? My God. <laughs> All right. Can you can you please stop that, man? Because I don't want to be like... Oh, by the way. <laughs> you forgot that was it, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> God. <laughs> As long as I can cook these chicken wings and they don't burn, 
We're good. You guys are our business, right? <laughs> if they go, if they burn, they go into shock and delight. <laughs>